were always influenced, you could say inspired by David's, David Lynch's style of combining surrealism with the uncomfortable, un, 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 uncomfortable, uncomfortable. Jesus Christ, I don't really get it myself, but I feel that it, it could feel more honest and closer to the heart to some people to be nasty and be awkward because it's a part of ourselves that we usually like to hide in these guys' films, they are just in plain sight. And I remember that in, in the self-title, Mr. Bungle's title, also the best Mr. Bungle album, excuse me, they have some samples of the Blue Velvet movie. But anyway, the point is that Disco Volante is a full record of a Lynch-inspired, Lynch-influenced oniric reverie, reverie. Reverie. See, that's a nice word. It's nice to say. Like uncomfortable, uncomfortable, uncomfortable. Jesus, it feels like sanding paper on my mouth. Uncomfortable. Bad word. Bad word. This is one of the albums I want to review on my classic list, but not just because it's a good album or because it's super avant-garde and all that. But because it fits with the topic I want to talk about. What is Disco Volante about? Uh, Disco Volante is a very, I don't know, freeform song. It's a bit like if you wanted to make a song collage album, but instead of sampling, you composed it. I guess. <laughs> wow, what a genius idea! As with any David Lynch film, the atmosphere in the album feels thick, like really thick, but it's also ordinary, it's like in a dream, yeah, in a dream. Well, the music seems, it can be seem kind of random or dissipated in most senses, it's really only dissipated in structure, random in structure. I have always said that Disco Volante shares many sound similarities with Heretic. But the thing is that while the music of Heretic itself is more of a spilled paint canvas painting, the music of Disco Volante turns into something that is at the same time less but more tangible. Not the world of smear paintings, but the world of trees. Yeah, it, I mean, it's less tangible because you can touch a dream, you, you cannot touch it, you cannot touch it, but you can, like, a dream gives you more concrete, less abstract images than a splash painting, so it's more tangible and less tangible at the same time. Isn't, isn't that like a clever, clever comparison, do you think? <laughs> please say it, <laughs> please say that I'm a good writer, please. <laughs> anyway, in the world of dreams, it can be fascinating. It can be really boring, that's that's for sure, but it can be really fascinating. In this album, there are so many miniatures of music, and they are composed in a wonderful tapestry of influences. You have new tango, you have psychedelic pop, sometimes a little bit of klezmer, a little bit of raga rock, and a little bit of acid techno, like, even when they're so small, so like, like, small, like, they're just miniatures of sounds, they still can be really catchy, and sometimes they can really be cinematic. Like, if you isolate that part and you play it on your own, you say, wow, this is kind of catchy, this is kind of catchy, this is a kind of great sound. Or you can say, wow, this sounds like the epic start of a big suite. So yeah, well, these moments can be memorable on their own. The album just dissolves them instantly and they just end in a cacophony of panel, music, concrete sounds 
and fear recordings or it just changes the song turning a thought into something completely different. Plagmatics? Plagmatics? That starts with a trash and metal section like and then it just suddenly stops. Yep. I'm not sure what it is, but it starts to build up something. The guitar and the voice together seem to be independent of the rest of the song because the drums are and the guitars and the vocals are I can believe you where am I? You know when they do the dream sequence in the in the show in the movie and the character is being chased away by something like ah Plagmatics is like that. Plagmatics blends the sensation of yearning and anguish which you can experience in nightmares or delusions caused by sickness. Okay, that is a bit of a handful, I admit, but I mean, I, want to, I wanted to say something smart. <laughs> I wanted to say something smart, but uh, it's not void of meaning. When you have a nightmare, it's, you can, you know, I mean, imagine that you're feeling like shit. Could be any reason you, you got, uh, you're being stalked. Yeah, maybe you're being stalked by someone. You are an actress that you got a pretty good role in a movie. Your best friend is trying to replace you. At the end of the day, you don't know who you are, if you're you or you're not you. Of, of, of she's you, of, I never got the the ending of that film. Uh, I mean, it's all it's all a right movie. It's all a right movie. Anyway, the pants. It's 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 a dark ambient piece. It's just, just dark ambient. Yes, and one dark ambient piece, and then another dark ambient piece, and it's always exuding different ominous melodies and they have this sci-fi flair to it like ooh, ooh, wee, ooh. violencia domestica and there is violence like when there is oh i have an idea okay if you see right here in the beginning and um, this part is pure violence this part is Pure violence, and then we have more violence, and then we have the cheap sentimentalism. Like there is this, this part is kind of a music, more musically inclined part. This, this is the Tidar Tiso Lodeme. The guy is just trying to be romantic, and then just the kind of brain, the brain goes like. It's, the brain is just doing his thing. And then the ending of the nightmare when the guy gets super possessive and and so on a tragedy. You can see it's kinda random. This part is kinda kind of a tango. Has a bit of a tango flair. But this part but this part is kind of a metal heavy guitar thing. And that's it. It's not necessarily telling a story with a beginning or end. It's just telling you a dream someone had. This is something that a lot of Mongol inspired bands have not either focused or understood yet, I feel. Bongol's eclectic eclecticism eclecticism. I have to stop writing words that I can pronounce. Bongol's eclecticism it's more about general genre genre bending than song swapping. The songs do not change one after another in the same track, but they can be they can explore widely different sounds around the same idea while staying cohesive as a single open albeit broken piece. The jar is broken. The jar is broken. But you can still see it's a single jar with the same pieces. 
It's not a jar composed of different jars. It's a broken jar, but it's the same jar. What are some bongo inspired pants that just do some swapping than general swapping? In the bad side of the spectrum, we have Don Salsa. Yeah, I don't like Don Salsa. It's just, it's me. It's me. In the good side of the spectrum, we have, in the good side of the spectrum, we have Sepka Chot. Sepka Chot. Um, the album of the 48 pieces, it's 48 pieces. Sometimes you get it in seven tracks, but if you listen to it in seven tracks, you're going to be, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> because the seven pieces don't have a proper cohesion to them. They swap from mood to mood. Sometimes the song is very suave. And then it just gets goofy. Do, 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 And it's song swapping or rather than genre, genre swapping. But it's good. This album is pretty good, actually. Yeah, and Don Salsa is just bad. <laughs> I think Stratosphere is better than that. It has, it, it's also song swapping. But I enjoyed it a lot more than Don Salsa because... I, that salsa is just bad. <laughs> Sorry, it had to be said. It had to be said. Don salsa is bad. It's bad. So the emotions in the record can be in this covalente can be as terrifying and revolting as they can be in good old Lynch, David Lynch movies. You know, like in Blue Velvet, yeah, there is the plot has kidnappings and abuse and other stuff that I don't know if I can say here. <laughs> or like in Inland Empire, where... What the hell was Inland Empire about? Still have no clue. And Wild Heart has Nicolas Cage. The thing is that this Covalente uh, has a bit of a added, add, added emotional palette. It's the Mike Patton's whimsy and the pants knock for jest, like they can be goofy and terrifying. So that makes it, in my opinion, that makes it unique on its own, rather than just a simple Lynch inspired record, like, I don't know, one of the soundtracks of his movies, I haven't checked. But you know why that doesn't take away the fact that this record is terrifying? Because the buffonery that embodies this album works to make it even more nefarious and depraved. Now the music feels that it's enjoying itself. This covalente transforms what could be a horror of a world of pure horror and shock into a tapestry of depravity and the darkness of the human soul, or something like that. When you listen to it for what it is, it becomes in one of the most horrifying albums that you could ever experience. As it stands right now, it could be the less popular of the three main Mr. Bongo records. I haven't seen the average drop in further every year. And the overall track ratings barely any bolded songs. California has pure bolded songs. This covalente's position is just miserable compared to those ratings. Curiously enough, something I noticed myself, of me myself, the track ratings seem to favor the tracks that maintain a proper rhythm instead of the more freeform ones. So the songs that feel more like actual songs. Still though, I find it an absolutely incredible record. Probably, 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 probably even more than the other two records, considering that it has such attention to detail in creating a cohesive soundscape. When I'm thinking, I'm not thinking about the word that I'm going to say, but how I'm going to say it, because it's already written. And it has this most palpable, almost tangible experience in the freeform song. Other bungle bands have either 
not manage or focus on doing and on create at all. If you find it difficult or maybe too difficult to properly grasp, my advice would be to start with the tracks that are more freeform and climb your way up to the tracks that are less freeform. So you leave the tracks with the most rhythm at the end. The record as a thematic piece is just pretty cohesive. And wait, 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 that is something I wanted to say. A thematic record and a concept record. You know, we have, you have, have heard of concept albums and rock operas and albums that tell a story. That's nice, that's, uh, you know, right and whatever. But I want to introduce a new concept, a thematic album, because it's not quite a concept album. It doesn't have a story to it, but it has like a general theme. This album is a very thematic album. The advantage of being a thematic but not a conceptual record is that if you can't understand the songs, you just can reorganize the movements and see if that helps you out. It's an album. It has little pieces that you can take and rearrange if you want. That's why songs exist. If it wasn't like that, it would be a tabletop record that just has one song per album. We're going to talk about tabletop as well because they're goaded. They are goaded. You can still take advantage of all these different songs and the pieces they have in the ordinary that you want and and independently digest them as you see fit. Don't be afraid of changing the order of the songs. Is it too much? Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's just too much for what is given to you. So if you don't like the record, I totally get it. It's just derranged, intense, wild shit bonkers experience, not in the way but in the way but the experience to me is undeniably unique it's edgy it's funny it's hilarious don't you sometimes want stuff that is just edgy just for fun this album is like that there are some other pongo albums that that i don't know the title is just big fat box of poop or and they talk about poop uh, the whole album or something like that. Disco Volante has ideas. Disco Volante has ideas. So it's not just an edgy for the sake of being edgy record. It's a fun record. And yeah, I recommend it to you. Absolutely, I recommend it to you. It's not just because it's very oniric and dreamlike and surreal. But also because it's completely evil and hysterical. And that's neat. And for my rating, for my rating, this album should be... Yes. Yes, 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 yes. My rating for this album should be... Falling Teeth. Falling Teeth. I, I actually hope that you enjoy it. Okay, maybe I want you that you get a little scared and, and a little... By it, but at the end, I want you to enjoy it. It feels as if the sky was just a cotton ceiling. You see light, you see white, but you don't see exactly where it's coming from. Since the clouds is just... Yeah, okay, I already said the last video that I like the grey skies and whatever. So, well... I guess I'll see you in the next one and... Goodbye, my beautiful souls. Stay safe.